Well, hello, little garter snake. I'm so happy to see you. Did you know that the garter snake was the friendliest and most sociable snake? They may come together for, um, let's say more amorous activities and to hang out together in winter. But a study by Morgan Skinner and No Miller found that some snakes interact well with each other. Specifically, the eastern garter snake sought out social contacts. Miller said that the snakes have a more sophisticated cognition than we have given them credit for. They observe that snakes actively seek out social interactions and choose to be with specific individuals or groups. So they just want to hang out with their friends. The scientific community is starting to use the word friend to describe animal relationships. Skinner's study showed that even if he randomly rearranged the snakes, they would move around and seek out prior snake friends. Maybe that's why they all look so happy all the time. Garter snakes are common snakes found throughout North and Central America with 35 recognized species. However, the consensus among scientists has that number changing periodically due to differences in their taxonomy. They typically have stripes or a spotted pattern going down the side. Garter snakes are usually less than two feet long. However, a few species are bigger. Some, like this San Francisco garter snake, have exquisite coloring. Sadly, this species is endangered due to illegal pet trade and diminishing habitat. Ready for another surprise? For years, we said garter snakes were non-venomous. Turns out we were wrong. Kinda. They do, in fact, produce a neurotoxic venom. Against humans, it's not very strong and may produce some swelling and burning. In addition, the snake doesn't have an effective way to deliver the venom to a larger animal. This posterior tooth, or rear-facing fang, does better at subduing a frog. For the most part, they are not aggressive and are often used as education animals. Garter snakes are carnivores and actively hunt for their food. The good news for those of us who are gardeners is that they eat many garden pests. The tips of their forked tongues are called tines, and they collect chemical information from the air around them. This helps them locate prey. Garter snakes eat slugs, snails, leeches, grasshoppers, and rodents. This guy was sunning himself at my local community garden. Please eat all the bad pests, little snake. For larger prey, such as frogs, salamanders, and mice, they can unhinge their lower jaw. Food is swallowed whole. The garter snake is resistant to the toxins in a toad's skin. They will also eat fish and tadpoles and are very adept at swimming in the water. Garter snakes are prey for many animals, including this red-tailed hawk. Raccoons, skunks, and opossums will hunt them as well. If you have elementary age children, I have a new activity book on raccoons, as well as several adult books on wildlife rehabilitation that I will link in the description. This is interesting. We typically think of turkey vultures as eating carrion, or dead things but they do occasionally hunt. Check out my video on turkey vultures to learn more about this very important species. Garter snakes give birth to live young. They can have as many as 45 babies at one time. Wow, now I know why females only give birth every two or three years. Neonates are about five inches long and may reach two feet by the end of their first year. Rich found this little guy in early spring trying to stay warm by sleeping on the road. As the weather gets colder in the fall, garter snakes will often migrate to a hibernaculum or underground den. 
Garter snakes are sluggish during brumation, but don't go into a deep sleep. They may move around on sunny days or try to go farther underground if the weather gets colder. Want to help garter snakes in your community? Build a hibernaculum. This will give them a place to winter over. Now I will have a more step-by-step process on the website, but it's pretty simple. Start by digging a hole about two feet deep and four feet wide. Put about two inches of sand at the bottom just to help with drainage. My graphic is a bit simplistic, but you get the idea. Just layer your hole with some larger cement blocks, rocks, and bricks at the bottom to create an area where the snakes could move around. Make sure things are firm and don't cave in. Pile old logs and brush on top. Place an old plumbing pipe for them to use as an entry if needed. Cover with some leaves. Lastly, put some soil on top and plant some nice perennial wildflowers there. I hope you have enjoyed learning more about the fabulous garter snake. Please subscribe to my channel. I'm excited that I have almost reached 1,000 subscribers and I'm working hard to make good content about wildlife and organic gardening. Thanks so much for watching and have a sunny day.